Hello, and today in this short video I'm going to teach you how to create a Pong game in Scratch for beginners. So, to start off, uh, you're going to want to make a sprite which is a kind of rectangle. So just click on this costumes tab in the corner and now create that kind of rect rectangle. This is going to be our kind of paddle. So make sure to click on this rectangle button, then create this paddle just by dragging across the screen and creating a well rectangle. Then move your mouse across the screen until you get to this point in the center where the well is going to automatically go. As you can see, it just snapped in place. So now, we, now that we've done that, that's well. I think that's going to be a bit ridiculous to use as a paddle, so I just just make it a bit bigger. We'll do the center it again. So what we're going to do now is just program it so it goes to the mouse. And let's actually change it uh, so it's going in zero degrees. That'll make it so it's standing up like this. So after that, uh, just to create, uh, go to, you can see that in the code tab, there's uh, this section called control. Now in this, there's a something called a forever block. This basically allows you to repeat something over and over again. So what you want to do here is uh, keep on setting the mouse's Y position. Well, keep on setting this paddle's Y position to that of the mouse. Now you can see that when we run this, it's going to the mouse. And also in the events block, you can now see that when that there's something called when the flag is clicked. So if you drag that and just add it to this kind of block, you can now see that when we press this flag, it's going to run this script. So in Pong, we want to make it so we can get the ball to go over and hit this paddle. So what we're going to do is just create another sprite and make it look like a ball. So just to create a circle by pressing on the costumes tab again, and this time selecting the circle tool. Make sure it's in the center again, and now make another forever script. So when this flag is clicked forever, Forever is going to move forward 10 steps. Now what you can see when we press a flag is that it actually starts moving across the screen. So how do we get it so it doesn't just stop when it reaches that end? There's also another block called if on edge bounce. Just drag that in and now you can see that it's bouncing around the stage. So now you've done that, uh, just add something called an if block. This just checks whether a condition is true. So uh, if one plus one is equal to two, it's going to say true. But if one plus two is equal to true, Two, then uh, if it checks whether one plus two is equal to two, you're going to see that it does not show uh, it's true. It shows that it's false. So uh, what you're going to want to do is see whether this ball is touching that paddle. 
Now we just do this by checking by using a touching block. Then just click on that section there and then set it to sprite one, which as you can see is this sprite here as it says sprite one. So if touching sprite one, it's going to change direct the direction by 180 degrees. Now you can see that it's going to bounce off whenever the paddle uh, hits the ball. Well, when the ball hits the paddle, sorry. So, we're going to make it so at the beginning of the game it's going to go to the X position 0, which is in the middle of the stage, in the kind of X coordinate, so this coordinate here, and in the middle of the stage in the Y coordinate, which is this coordinate here. So it goes up and down, whilst X goes left and right. Now we've done that, let's make it so the direction is going to be something relatively random uh, in this pointing towards the paddle. So what we're going to do here, actually let's point away from the paddle. We're going to set the direction to either, let's say, 50 degrees to 100 degrees. Now you can see that that's going to hit there, and then now we have to kind of bounce the paddle off this ball. But as you can see, the way it's bouncing is a bit odd. We kind of want it to look a bit more random than that, because it seems to be going in the same two places every time. To do this, you just use this add block we shown you earlier, and you use the pick random block, which basically just picks any number from uh, set no, the numbers that you've set in between those. So one to ten would give you any numbers between one and ten. So add a hundred and eighty to either minus fifty to fifty. So that's either going to subtract fifty from one hundred and eighty or add fifty to one hundred and eighty. This is going to look quite extreme, but it is going to work. And as you can see, it's now looking a lot more random. Let's just decrease it slightly so it doesn't look quite as extreme. Yeah, that's a bug there. Let's ignore that for now. Uh, now we're going to make it so there's a paddle the opposite side that's also trying to get the ball. So just duplicate sprite one by right clicking on it and pressing du duplicate. Now what you're going to do is just change this to 225 instead of minus 225. As you can see now it's kind of on both sides of the stage. That isn't exactly what we wanted. What we want is for that to do its own thing. So, to do this, just make it so it's going to set the Y position to the Y position of Sprite 2. So to do this, we're going to use the of Sprite 2, of something Sprite. So we're going to set of to Sprite 2, as that's what we're checking, and we're going to check for the uh, direct for the Y position of Sprite 2. Now, as you can see, it's going to go to that to that Y position and always head in that direction. So, what we're going to do now is make it so the ball will respond to that pad a new paddle in the same way as we did the other one. So swipe free. As you can see we've got a kind of pong game, but there's no way we can win or lose. So just create a kind of colour in the background 
uh, we're going to set this to VED so just click on the fill button and then change it and drag it all the way to VED then you can mess around with these sliders to make it either more saturated or darker then press this button here to remove the outline and make sure you're on this rectangle tool now you can just drag and see that there is now a red line that has appeared at the ed edge of the stage we'll do the same on the other side so now we're going to make it so if this ball is touching that red it's going to stop the game so just press this touching color icon and press the pick color option and then you see everything gets grayed out instead of instead of the stage uh, and just go to the stage and click on the color as you can see we've now got that color after we've done that just press get the stop all which is also going to stop the game uh, and put it into the script so if we just let it lose and now you can see that we've lost the game so now what we're going to do is make it so that uh, the score is going to increase when uh, we are touching sprite 1 so create a variable called score and change it by 1 every time it hits sprite 1 set score to 0 at the beginning of the game So, when it's touching sprite 1, it's now going to give the score variable. That's working. But before we stop the game, we're going to create a new variable and call it high score. This is just going to record the score of the player and uh, make it so uh, you can beat kind of compete against other people and their higher scores. So what we're just doing here with these variables is uh, changing the value of the of these kind of numbers stored in there and you can either set or change them. Setting them will just set them to the variable that was currently well that you've set it to. Uh, so once we've done that, you can see that the high score is kind of glitching since it's uh, we are not checking whether high score is well whether the score is more than high score. So we need to make sure we do that to prevent it from uh, looking like uh, it just changes every time. So yeah, that's one way around. Sorry. Okay. That'll do. Okay. Now you can see that it seems to be working. Sort of. <laughs> and make sure you put stop all and not in that. And now you can see that it stops the game when uh, and checks for the high score and sets it to the highest value ever. And as you can see, that's now working. There is currently no win way to win against this, but this now will do for today's video, so bye.